Tommy from the Bronx just reached out to me. Told me something. I said, is this public? He said, you can share it. It had to do with Nick Diaz. You guys might have heard this by now, but I just got it. It was Nick Diaz versus Kevin Holland. Now, I like it. Why not? A little bit a little bit surprised by it, only because Nick Diaz is such a mega star. But what do you do with Nick Diaz? Nick Diaz at all times is one win away from being in a main event. At all times. He was last time when he fought Robbie Lawler. If he'd have got the jump on Lawler, who knows where Nick would have been. But it would have been a mega fight. Can we agree on that? Yes. You have a star in Nick who needs to work a little bit of the kinks out. We understand that. He's also an ace in jiu-jitsu. You then have Kevin Holland. And Kevin openly has a couple of struggles with the wrestling, but he's also openly, for public view, working on it. And Kevin is going to change weight classes down to 170 pounds, so we've been told. Is that good for Nick or bad? In all fairness, don't forget, Nick, who you believe is a 170-pounder, did his last fight at 185, so does it overly matter? Now you got two guys that think they're 70-pounders that are willing to go 85. Maybe that solves a problem. But you still have to play your Nick Diaz card very carefully. You have for sure a star. You do not know if he has title aspirations, if he even wants to go on that run. If he's training that way, if he's looking that way in a gym, but he's still under contract and he wants to do something and everybody wants to see him do it. So you start matching him up very cleverly. And that's where when I see Tommy's recommendation or prediction or possibly inside scoop, I get it. I'm in. Because Kevin Holland is another guy who's one win away from a main event. Nick has been in the main event. Just to remind you guys, so is Kevin Holland. Nobody was on a trajectory like Kevin Holland. Th this year got a little bit off course, but last year at this exact same time, you couldn't read anything on MMA without reading about Kevin Holland. Because you remember that. He did five fights. He did them all in a row. He won them all. He was finishing guys, including Jacare. Kevin Holland was red hot. I submit for you, Kevin Holland starts fighting some really goddamn good guys. And Marvin Vittor, I mean, he's fighting some, some absolute studs. But I also never saw Kevin Holland lose a fight. I saw him lose positions. And I saw him lose the same position. So it's one of these things where you, you, you can't write off Kevin Holland, but what do you do with him? What do you do with a guy that has all the potential to be your main event? As a matter of fact, he's already been it. This isn't a conversation. This isn't maybe. We just got to get him back there. And then you have another guy in, in Nick Diaz who has all the potential to be your main event. This isn't a question. As a matter of fact, he's already been there. What do you do? Well, matching him up is very wise because I am right. I am right when I tell you Nick Diaz is one win away from being a main event. And I'm also right when I tell you Kevin Holland is one win away from being a main event. What do you do if you're a matchmaker? You put them together. You put them together. One of them is going to come out of that, and one of them is going to go right back to the top of the bill. It's a great booking. I don't have any more inside information than that. This could be something the kids are talking about on the underground. I haven't seen it yet. I'm sitting over here with my two viewers selling my window sheen, and I got a text from Tommy from the Bronx, but it makes sense to me. It, I like the match a lot. I do think we need to work on the weight class because we need to learn a couple of things about Nick. Nick did not make 170 pounds because Nick did not prepare properly. We all love Nick, and nobody wants to say anything negative, and I don't feel like I am. That's the truth. We can speak to what happened. Nick did not prayer properly, which greatly affected his calories into his calories out, which we saw on the scale. I feel like Nick overperformed. I don't real I don't know if, if people can remember well enough. We have very short-term memories, right? Just as human beings, but particularly in this sport. How often do we come out after a fight? That was the best fighter in the world. That's the that's the greatest of all time. We do it every week. We do it every week, forgetting what we saw the week before, right? Recency bias is what Errol Hawani calls it, but it's very true and it exists. And I feel as though you may not recall how close Nick was to Robbie Lawler. That's one of the parts of the story that wasn't told. That fight was harder than Diaz was prepared for at the time. It was harder. Robbie had more of an output than Nick remembered. Robbie stood his ground. Robbie was going to the body, punching holes in the gas tank. The fight was harder than Nick thought it was going to be. But Nick was performing 
that fight was much closer than even Nick knew at the moment he said, let's call it for the night. Let's hit the showers. It was closer than Nick knew. And I think when, I really think I'm right on this. I think when Nick went home and watched that, I'm like, oh my God, I could have won that thing. He might have been winning. This was stopped in the third round, just to remind you guys. I never saw it. The scores are public. They're accessible. I never saw them personally. But I do know someone that did see him that claims that Nick had won the first round. And if my memory is right and this was the third, I guess that would mean that Robbie won the second. They were still tied. It was a lot closer fight than people remember. It was a lot closer fight than Nick knew it was at the time. So it is important, though, to at least find out. Nick, what, what do you want to do? Is this a cash grab? That's okay. Everybody goes through that part of their career. But is that what this is? Or is this about contenderships? Is this about getting back? Is this about performing to the best of your abilities, working the rust off, using the Lawler fight, building some momentum, going there with Kevin Holland, getting inside, touching him up a little bit, going to the ground, doing the whole bit? Is that what this is about? Because it would matter. It really would matter. And that star that is Nick Diaz is still a star. But generally, you will put your stars against the absolute top guys. Generally, skills and popularity go hand in hand, but not always. And not always also when it's explainable as Nick. He'd been out for five years. He'd been out for five years. How great do you think he's going to look when you put him in there against a future Hall of Famer? What, what, right? And then it turns out he looked pretty damn good. What do you do? And where's his head at? Is it three rounds? Is it five rounds? Where are these guys going to fight? What weight class is it going to be at? Because I will tell you what's on the line. Both of those guys are one win away from returning to the main event. What it would be on the line in that fight is stardom. One of them's going to take it, and one of them's going to dim. MMA is as cold as it gets. It is as competitive as sport and as life gets. All your chips are in. But make no mistake, Holland versus Diaz is going to be about who goes to the top of the bill on their next one and who possibly doesn't return. 